Welcome to the Food Ball Show. My name is Renata Ribeiro, and I'm joined by the Dalai Lama of soccer, Simon Allen. Hey. And we also have to his left, Food Ball Harry. Hello. And Alexi to my right. How are you guys doing? So every episode, we are going to be talking about two of the best things in the entire world, soccer and my favorite, food. And today, we'll be covering groups A through D of the World Cup. Who do we have in group A? We have our host country, Russia, followed by Saudi Arabia, Egypt, and Uruguay. So let's talk about that first match, sure. Russia and Saudi Arabia. Sure. What do you think, Simon? Well, you know, I really think it's gonna be a great, great group, but what do you think? You know, Russia, Saudi Arabia, first match of the World Cup. I think uh, Russia's gonna have to come out and win. Uh, it's an easy match for them. Churchisov is gonna have his team ready. Saudi Arabia and Russia have only met once before in Riyadh back in 1993. Russia lost to Saudi Arabia 4-2, right. to that was the score. But uh, I think it's going to be important for them to win the match and uh, get started on a great campaign in their home field. What about you, Alexei? What's your thought? I think the uh, good match is going to be Egypt versus Uruguay. Egypt haven't been in the World Cup since 1990. Uruguay got a phenomenal attack. Cavani and Luis Suarez, they scored 92 goals together in, the world, in international football. It's going to be a great game. I, you know, I think Uruguay could do it, though. Simon? Well, listen, this, this group it comes down to two players, right? I like Egypt. Who doesn't like Egypt right now? All the world likes Egypt. It's like the second team they're supporting. So all eyes will be focused on Mo Salah, like Alexi mm -hmm. said, and Uruguay's Luis Suarez. Both of them have had successful campaigns this season going into the World Cup for their domestic sides. And quite honestly, I think they're going to go ahead and continue that form going into the World Cup. Wait. Is Mo Salah your favorite player? Salah is my favorite player. He's everyone's favorite player. Yeah. Well, Salah may be the informed player, but in Group C, right. we have a player that all the viewers are really rooting for, right. and he's the oldest player, right? We like to see these stories at the World yeah. Cup. The oldest player, the youngest player, the player with like, you know, one toe missing or something like that, <laughs> right? But to me, no yeah. doubt, in this group, it's ex-MLS player, Tim Cahill, and I'm really looking mm -hmm. forward to seeing him. Is that a great crew? He might have a great game. Yeah. A few of them. So yeah. Group C has Australia, Denmark, Peru, and France. And Alexi, do you think that the France-Peru uh, match is key? I do. You know, Peru, first time in the World Cup since 1982. They had a pretty strong qualification campaign. They drew with Argentina twice. They beat Uruguay and Ecuador. So I think they've definitely got the skills to upset France. Well, I mean, France are the strongest team in the group. They have amazing players. Griezmann, you're talking about Coleman, the younger player. Hopefully he'll make it back from his injury and make it, you know, in time to Dembele and all those guys. Great team, great squad. I think they pretty much, their, their second reserve could, could compete in the World Cup themselves. You know, Denmark, another strong team. I think second strongest team. And head-to-head, and -head, I think Denmark's only won about like eight out of the 15 matches they've played together, both European and on a national level, so, uh, but I think France is gonna come on top of that group. So listen, I agree, I, I agree with you. Arguably, I think Denmark, you know, is gonna be a spoiler there, but we'll have to wait to see. It's a funny old game, the ball is round. So, <laughs> what was that laugh? Okay. Well, it was funny comment, right? <laughs> okay, so Simon, right, right. do you think Australia has any chance at all? No. Well, no, I shouldn't say that. Bert van Marwijk is a really good coach, right? Okay. Listen, there's got some good players that are applying their trade all over the world. A lot of people are not going to give Australia any credit, but they're going to be a fun team to watch. But I think the, 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 the Aussie that's going to be really working hard is the guy between the sticks. The guy who plays for Brighton Hove Albion, a guy by the name of Matthew Ryan. I want everyone out there to go and check that out because he's going to be either picking the balls out of the net a lot or he's going to be saving a lot of them. All right, well, <laughs> let's move on to Group D right. uh, because all eyes are on Messi. So tell me, Alexi, what's your thought? You know, all eyes will be on Messi, but I like Nigeria. They've got quite a lot of um, Premier League players playing in their side. You know, um, Obi Mikel played about 240 games for Chelsea. You've got Moses who plays for Chelsea now. You know, so they've got a good stock of pedigree. And, you know, Nigeria is the most populous country in um, Africa. So they're definitely going to have a strong case, I feel. So, Harry, are your eyes going to be on Messi? He's got he's to perform and win the yeah. World Cup. I mean, yeah. the pressure's on him. Argentina, first match, very important, even though it's against Iceland. I, I don't think Iceland has a chance, even though Iceland beat England, uh, and they're ranked number 17th in wow. the world. Uh, but Argentina's going to come out strong. Uh, they've got to make a point, you know, and set precedence for the rest of the World Cup. 
Uh, Nigeria's never beat Argentina in the World Cup. I think that's, that's the key is for them to maintain that winning streak going into the knockout stages. Uh, they've kind of, they haven't done so well in the past mm -hmm. in, the, in, in the stage groups of the World Cup. They've kind of barely made it through 1-0, 2-1. You know, barely made it through, and, and I think they, they, Argentina's going to have to come out with a stronger squad. A lot of thoughts on that, huh? Yeah. All right, so Simon. Listen, a lot of people are going to be talking about Messi, but a lot of people are going to be talking about Luka Modric. A lot of people are going to talk about Mario Mandzukic of Croatia. Croatia are not a slouch team. I mean, you can go back to 1998 and saw that run, and, and these guys on the team are looking to emulate that. They're looking to essentially become legends like the legends of 1998. We can talk about Victor Moses at, 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 in Nigeria. And he wants to go ahead and be a legend, you know, for his country. With all that said, I have to sort of agree with the guys here. All eyes will definitely be on Messi. But there's also one of the greatest players in the world, Cristiano. Wait, what's his name? Cristiano. Oh, Cristiano. Well, yeah, he's obviously going to be, uh, you know, another set of eyes are going to be on mm -hmm. him as well. Sure, absolutely. I mean, guys, I mean, that guy is the most... Photogenic. Photogenic, but he's the most the photographed, you know, player <laughs> well, around. He, he, he is only name. one of the fittest players in the World Cup. Uh, at Such a handsome... Well, yeah. I think we're a little off topic right now. The, the, guy, the guy's body well, was, was measured to be like the body of a 24-year-old. Oh. His fitness... His ability, I mean, come on, let's look back at that bicycle see, kick. Okay, I do understand. Do you the, see the, how high he went up there? Uh, well, listen, the, this, uh, this, this bro love you have for Cristiano has to end right here, because we were talking about football here, right? All right, back <laughs> to football. But Cristiano, okay, Cristiano is in Group B. Right. Um, group B has the Iberian Derby. Fans are already dismissing Iran and Morocco. First match, I think... It's, it's key for both of them to, to get a win out of that match. Mm -hmm. Iran and Morocco have met twice before, and Iran's beaten them both times. Uh, Iran, Spain uh, met a couple of times. Uh, Morocco's never really played Portugal. Um, and I think they're going to they're gonna have a real tough time with uh, the Iberian powerhouse. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, I still believe it's going to be a fun group. I mean, uh, might be an upset there. I don't know. We'll see. I saw Iran play in 1998. You know, they've got the highest international goal scorer ever. I forget his name, I'm sure Simon knows who is. That's right. I know everything. The Dalai you know, Lama. I think the real matchup's gonna be Portugal, Spain. Spain have won too many times against Portugal. Even though Cristiano Ronaldo is the main guy right now, I think Spain has, has a solid team and usually teams outperform the individuals. I really think Iran can be a spoiler team in this. I've said it before on different radio stations and different radio shows. Mm -hmm. I think Iran can be a spoiler. Iran had its, had its pedigree in 1978. It took them 20 years, and after, after 20 years, in 1998, they became spoilers of another team called the USA. The USA. Right, so now they're going to be here, and they're looking at these, at these two Iberian countries and saying, well, we can be spoiler to, the, to this. And I think the last game, I don't, I don't put it past Iran to beat you know, anyone in front of them in the last game. So, I, with this one, I would say watch your space, but again, do you want to talk about Cristiano? <laughs> I think we've spoken enough about him. I think we've spoken enough about soccer right now, and I want to get to the second part of the show. So let's bring it over to the kitchen and see what's going on there. Hey everyone, it's Mary Lou Miani. I am here to talk about the most amazing food, Moroccan food that I have not tried yet. But uh, let me introduce you guys to my uh, favorite girls. Renata over there. Hey guys, so I'm gonna be over here kind of commentating and eagerly awaiting the food that they're bringing to the table. And of course, the special guest, the chef, Moroccan chef, Tuda. How's it going? Good, thank you. Okay, so please tell us, uh, what are you gonna be preparing today? So I have two dishes, the must popular dishes in Morocco. I have here couscous. Couscous. And later I'm gonna show you pastilla. Okay, okay. So um, couscous, what, what, can you explain more about that? Yeah, so after I steamed couscous twice, mm -hmm. it's a long process. I have here vegetables. You can use as many vegetables as you have. Oh man, I don't wanna <laughs> spill anything. And I did it. <laughs> Messy Mary Lou as usual. Is this like tomato sauce or what is this? Yeah, it's tomato sauce and I have here zucchini. This looks potatoes, so good. Carrots, cabbage, and chickpeas. Chickpeas. Place vegetables and pour sauce on okay. top of it. Yeah. Let me show you guys this amazing dish. It kind of looks like something uh, from Mexico because yes, that's where I'm from. Um, 
No, it's, it's Moroccan. Of course, it's Moroccan. Okay. Wait, so are we gonna mix that together? Or is that how it goes? The yes. couscous on the bottom. Oh, okay. No, you should mix it. This one. Can we I see the it. mixing happen? I like playing with food, clearly. Let's do it. Let's do this. So when do we eat this? Like, is this like an all like an everyday uh, dish? So in Morocco, we typically eat it once a week. Okay. Every Friday. Every Friday? Yeah. Why every Friday? I don't know. It's tradition. It's tradition. Yeah. yeah. Tradition. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. Now we're gonna go on to our second dish. Tuda, please tell us what is it that you have for us. I have the chicken pastilla. All right. Bring it out. Ooh, it looks like a pie. Wow. Strong. That looks so good and I don't yeah, even know what it is. So is this like a chicken pie? Because it looks like a... Yeah, it's kind of a pie with okay. layers of egg mixture, chicken and almonds. So how long does this take to make? Half a day. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That is long. So I am so curious, how do you make this? We fry onion, okay. we add eggs, and mm -hmm. we stir on a medium heat. And then we fry almonds. We add cinnamon and powdered sugar. Okay. Wait, so is this sweet? Yeah, it's sweet and salty. Oh, so when do you eat it normally as part of like your main course or is it part of dessert? No, it's a main. It's a main yeah. course. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait to try this. <laughs> it's right. three layers, chicken, almonds, and the egg mixture with onion. Super random, but how do you say I'm hungry in uh, Moroccan? <laughs> Fia jour. Fia jour. Fia jour, always. Sounds kind of French. I'm, dig I'm digging it, I'm digging it. What do so we do here? we're gonna sprinkle the powdered sprinkle. sugar. Sprinkle, okay. The best kind of food is a food you can play with. Sugar powder. A salty dish with sugar poured all over it. It's a must. In the Moroccan culture, mm, okay. we we make it in every special occasion. Yeah. So it is for special occasions. Yes. It's not something you would eat like yes. on a random. And Tuesday. because today it's a special occasion, of course, I made it. Yeah. I Thank love you. that. Let's see it. Yum. That looks so good. So good. Look at this. It's so. Beautiful, but yeah, you know it what? Need decoration. It looks good. Yeah, I think we should take this to the table. What do you think? Yeah. Hey guys, so it's finally time for our delicious Moroccan meal. We have everyone together. We have our amazing chef. We have the entire team of hosts, and we are ready to devour this incredible food that was made. So let's do it. All right, what do we have here? Fish pastilla. Fish pastilla. Vegetable couscous. The vegetable couscous. And this is a lamb couscous. Yeah. I knew that one. Uh, chicken with marinated oranges. Yes. I'm gonna go with that. Um, and that's called zaluk. It's, zaluk. Yeah. Okay. It's eggplant mm -hmm. and roasted peppers. Eggplant and roasted peppers. Oh, that looks so good. Yeah. And that's very similar to that one, the bastilla, yeah. right? Mini chicken bastilla. Mini chicken bastilla. And we had the big bastilla, but we kind of ate it. And, and then we got some Moroccan wine here. Wow. Oh. We do. We're gonna sample it. Only the best. Only yeah. the best Moroccan wine. The best right. part of drinking wine is opening wine. Am I the only one who thinks that? No, the best part of drinking wine is drinking wine. Oh, yeah, I guess you're right. Well, that's why I'm like, <laughs> no, listen, folks. I mean, like, we've been talking about Morocco and Moroccan food. Has anyone ever actually been, to, other than the chef? Has anyone been to Morocco? Well, we can talk about that while I start <laughs> grabbing. Food. All right, yeah, go for it. I have been to Morocco. Yes, please. Uh, I would like to point out that we have. Some incredible martini glasses for our it's wine glasses. Moroccan gla wine glasses. Oh, actually. Moroccan yeah, wine you. glasses. Okay, I'll just have a little bit of that. PSA, that's not real. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I've, I've been to Morocco. Who? Anyone I else see. has been? I went to Mahakesh. Oh. Yeah, it was amazing. I spent five days with a friend of mine and her family at an incredible resort there. We did so many like typical plans, ate amazing food. We did camel rides and four wheeler rides. It was. It was amazing. Wow. Camel rides are the best. I've been to the America. The best. Oh, really? Have you ever eaten camel? Okay, no. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure he has. Renata, you should try some of that lamb. Just pick it up and just eat it. You know, it's, you know it's what? Just. I'm just gonna oh, go for it. Let's see. Oh, but this is a bone. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a bone, isn't it? No, oh, it's that looks really good. Looks really good. Wait, that's actually really, really good. good. Yeah, I know. What was this, chef? What was this called again? Zalo. That is a brand new flavor I've never had. It, it, feel, it just, I, I've never had anything that tastes like smoky and 
tomato like this. This is a really good one. I'm it's glad like I picked this up. Baba ganoush, I think. Please give us just a small spoon. It's like baba ganoush, huh? What I want to know is where's the eggplant in that? That's a good, <laughs> a really Thank good you. question. Because it just looks, it looks like a lot of tomato sauce. Yeah. No, well, you know, you should have, you should have a little, you should have yeah. a little, taste. You have a little. <laughs> My plate is filling one. up. Yeah. But you know, in the Middle East, there's a lot of different. Thank you. That's good. Even oh. into Eastern Europe, there's a lot of eggplant mm. style yeah. dishes. Like, I would say, like this is kind of like a dip. Mm -hmm. So there's oh. a lot of them. Uh, the Middle Easterners, and, and, and you'll find it called baba ganoush or what we call mutabbal. In Eastern Europe, you'll find, or in Russia, something they call ikra. Oh yeah. What's ikra? Ikra, ikra is ikra. again eggplant based, and it's mm. very similar to this. Actually, looks very very oh, similar, so but this is a little bit more dense. Okay. A little bit more dense, but so that's a dip that we have like been eating, <laughs> not like a dip. <laughs> I want to know a little bit more about the World Cup, because that's what we're here for. Also, right, right. So, anyone yeah. have any outlying thoughts that they haven't brought in? We did discuss Messi, and but we didn't really discuss him a lot. And he's brought a lot to the table when it comes to world football. You know, every year we discuss who's the better player, mm -hmm. Messi or Cristiano, right? Every year we go, who's the best player? Every season, they play mm -hmm. each other four times a year in their own league. And, I, and you know, me being the Dalai Lama of soccer, I want to be a bit more philo philosophical. Mm -hmm. All right. Please be. While we're eating Moroccan food. Okay. Why is there a discussion about who the best player out of these two? Why not just enjoy them during the World Cup as much as well possible? Said. Because there's always pressure. There's always someone who wants to be the best or is known as the best or has the best press. I know, but football's about unity. I agree. You know, we, we, it's not just about, um, you know, going out to, to be in opposition. It's about coming together, just like this table, mm -hmm. and enjoying, you know, what the World Cup offers. Well, I mean, in groups A through D, we're going to see it, I think. In Group A, we have Mo Salah, right? You know, playing for Egypt. I mm -hmm. think he's going to have a breakthrough on an international level. We've seen him breakthrough in Liverpool. Oh, right. Group B, we got Ronaldo in there, yes. But I mean, there's a lot of great players mm -hmm. in Spain, young yeah. guys like Isco, right? Asensio, right. which actually scored the second goal against Bayern Munich. Right. Uh, you know, he's got great pace. Group C, we got the French national team right. with a lot of young players. Um, and Group D, of course, we have Messi. But um, I think um, in that group, we're going to see young Nigerians, uh, you know, players which are going to come out and make, you know, they'll have a great breakthrough as well. Let me ask you, Simon, how far does Mo Salah have to get to win the Balloon d'Or? How far does he have to go? In the, in the World Cup. If he gets to the semis, he's won it, but... Yeah, I, you know, that's a really good question. That's something we have to watch during the World Cup, but to me, Mo Salah is already an Anfield hero, right? He's already a legend. That's true, that's true. He's already a legend in one part of England. He's become everyone's favorite person to watch, I guess, he's, in England. You know what, he's a quality guy as well. He's and he's not a, just no, the, yeah, yeah, he's a nice he's guy. A nice, he's a nice, he's one of those guys you want to say, oh, that could be my kid's hero. So I think if, he, if anyone deserves it, it's him. And I think if you're going to put it down to like how many games he's going to win, I think... Just by showing up to the World Cup, he deserves it. I mean, and just, I mean, that's, and that's not the football brain, that's like the football heart talking. But oh. if Ronaldinho wins the World Cup, there's no way he's not going to win it. That is true, but I mean, that, that's a big if. That's a big if. That's a big if. I don't think he's going to be there. Well, they, they won the Euro Championship, so. That's true, that's true. It's not far fetched for them to it's win. It's a the different World animal, mm -hmm. and uh, like, you know, I always say that my dear old grandmother used to say, the ball is round, anything could happen. And it's I, a funny and old it's, game. It's, and it's a funny old game, right, right. Those yeah. are a lot of facts right there. The ball is round. <laughs> well, well, okay. for everyone who's watching. The ball is round. So if we walk into Morocco, I expect next time to have great food like this. Of course. Mm -hmm. Great people. Chef Tuda, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thank you. The food thank was you. amazing. Yes. Delicious. I, I, think, I think we demolished it. Um, the flavors were amazing. And we wish the Moroccan team a lot of luck in thank the World you. Cup. And we want to do a shout out to one of our sponsors. Pro Soccer in Pasadena. If you guys are in California, check it out. Um, you can get 10% off, which is pretty amazing, especially during the World Cup. You can go there and buy all the gear that you need to celebrate and support your favorite team. The code is... Foodball. Foodball. All F lowercase. F-O-O. D. Like D B A L L. Um, so head over to Pro Soccer in Pasadena. They're awesome. They're a sponsor. They're helping us make this happen. And um, you know, also we can subscribe to our channel, right? Instagram at Football Network and uh, Facebook. Just follow us, Football Network. Until next Cheers. time.